everyone, and welcome to another episode of Turn Left. I am your host, Indiana's own Dana Black, coming to you live, yes, all the way live from Black Pro Studios, where we talk about Indiana politics from the left side of things. Well, things are starting to wind down at the state house, and there's a lot of bills that are being signed. And the governor is just kind of going through, and and all the whether the good bill or bad bill, if it passes, he may sign it. So uh, he's done running for governor. So you may not like half the stuff that's coming out of the state house. He'll be gone. I just need y'all to understand that. But let's talk about some of the things that he has going on. WTR, WRTV reports Governor Eric Holpin signed 79 bills today, bringing this legislative session's total up to 93 bills signed into law. Among the bills signed by Holcomb were Senate Bill 43, House Bill 1186, House Bill 1286, and House Bill 1365. Senate Bill 43 aims to correct staffing issues at 911 call centers. The bill bans public safety agencies from establishing a residency requirement for 911 dispatchers. In 2020, the Indiana General Assembly designated 911 operators as first responders in Indiana code. Because of that designation, some agencies require that 911 operators live in the community in which they serve. There was opposition to the bill. I can understand because we know that sometimes folks don't really be wanting to hire community folk. I, I, I'm always talking about why do we have IMPD officers living in J Johnson County? I'm always asking why do we have IMPD officers living in Hancock County? They make it seem like there's not enough square footage in Indianapolis for them to find those people a place to live. There's definitely places for people to live. And they're affordable. See, my fear about th that particular bill is that somebody who applies for the job that lives in the county is not going to get the opportunity because some homeboy, homeboy is looking out for their brother over in Greenwood or somewhere over in Greencastle or Newcastle, and the person in Indianapolis is not going to get that job. So I'm not really a big fan of that piece of legislation, but okay, not, not a whole lot I can do about it this session. HB 1186, which I really hate, will require people to stand 25 feet away from police officers if an office officer makes a request during an incident. Uh, there was an opposition to this bill. First of all, I just need y'all to think about one thing, 25 feet. Would, would the officers who snuffed out and took George Floyd's life gotten, gotten evicted if people were 25 feet away but because that young minor was so close to the scene, she was able to see the knee on the neck for nine sec nine minutes. See, what you hiding? 25 feet, and is it 25 feet from the scene or 25 feet from wherever the police officer's standing from? Because they could be standing in the next county talking about you can't see the scene. I need y'all to understand that. Not everybody's on the up and up. Not everybody is about the right. We need to be able to hold these folks accountable. Uh, 25 feet, it passed. House Bill 1286 was signed and will require coroners in Indiana to test for xyl xylazine, xylazine in people who die from drug overdoses. House Bill 1569 would prohibit those in state prisons from receiving gender-affirming surgery because that's... I, okay, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm, 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 I'm going to let that one go. I'm just going to let that one go. And then, uh, of course, we already know SB, uh, SB 480 was signed, prohibiting gender-affirming surgery to minors. But it also it prohibits gender-affirming care, which means there's no more puberty blockers. Uh, if, you, if you can't get a puberty blocker, then what you going to do? Can't even get puberty blockers. I need you all to understand. I mean, you, we literally just took away parents' right to choose what kind of health care they want for their child. The state says we know better than you. Parents' rights, right? Parental rights. Ain't that what they always screaming about when they don't want to teach their kids about real black history? Parental rights. Parental rights. Whatever. Okay, there was one good thing that came out, another good thing that came out of the session, and I, I'm going to chalk it up to this as being a really good bill. AP reports, India, Indiana law now makes it illegal for anyone to possess devices for adapting a firearm into a machine gun. 
Republican Governor Holcomb on Thursday signed a bill expanding state law to include so-called Glock switches that are already illegal under federal law. Police officials say such switches can convert a semi-automatic gun into one that shoots continuously while the trigger is pressed, firing dozens of bullets within a few seconds. The Indiana House and Senate both by wide margins approved banning the gun switches, even as the Republican-dominated legislature has uh, erased many gun laws in recent years, including repealing the state's handgun permit in 2022. I like this, guys. I mean, we know that we're not, we're not, the NRA was just here. So you know what bed the Indiana legislatures lie in. There's no way to get around that. They love their guns. But at least now you got to pull the trigger each time versus, you know, being able to just randomly shoot. So I'm going to chalk that one up as a good one. We'll see how far it goes because you may not even know who has a switch because the bottom line is you don't have to actually register your weapon anymore. You don't have to have a license to carry. So how do you know the dude got it? Those are just minor details. I know. How can you know a person has a gun if they haven't registered and gotten a gun permit? Who knows? So how you gonna know if they got a switch? Unless you they do something, you catch them and then you charge them, charge them again. But how you gonna know? How you gonna know? So I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but there was a lot of bills that came out of that state house. And guys, if you have not thought about it already, I'm going to need you to consider running for office next year. Find out who your house rep is. Find out who your state senator is and run for office because we got to send them some help. We got to send them some people that are really going to get this job done and stop nonsense. Like, I don't know, 1608 is still going through the state house. You know which one that is, right? The one that says you can't talk about gender, what gender identity is in up to the third grade. Now, did you see what happened in Florida this week? They had that exact same don't say gay bill in Florida. The exact same one. And it was only to the third grade. Oh, my God. What was the harm? It was just the third grade. You see what he did this week? This week he said, no, we want it from K through 12. So now we cannot talk about gender identity to 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds in Florida. You think since we already wrote the exact same bill that was in Florida is not coming to Indiana and they're going to ban the ability to understand gender and gender identity in high school. Mind you, this is when they teach sex ed in high school, they show you pictures of infected genitals. I don't know about y'all, but that, that scared the crap out of me as a young person. I wasn't no good after that. But now they're saying, no, we can't even talk about that. We can't talk about gender identity. It's coming. The don't say gay bill, it's, it's still working its way through. There were some amendments in the Senate. It passed the Senate. It went back to the House with some amendments. I wish they would just kill it because everybody needs to learn something about gender identity. That way we don't misgender anybody and we treat people with respect. The more, more knowledge is better, not less knowledge. And I wish these folks would understand that, but I guess they, you know, they like they stupid people. They like they people stupid, uncreative, and, and without the ability to think for themselves and, and come to conclusions with all the science. All right, y'all, that's my rant. Oh, I get to share again. Bohm's Unique Boutique. Today's show is brought to you by Bohm's Unique Boutique. Click on the QR code. And for all Turn Left listeners, you can get a 10% discount on your order by using the code DEMOCRAT. Be sure to visit www.bohmsuniqueboutique.com. All right, guys, Indiana's on Dana Black. Listen, uh, the primary is around the corner. I get that. Uh, right now, though, if you still need some digital content, you need somebody to help you out, Look me up, Black Pearl Studios, IT Solutions. I can create your digital content. I can help you with your websites. I can do all kind of good stuff. Scan the QR code and holla at your girl. I love doing this kind of stuff. I really, really do. All right, let's get to my guest tonight. I got a veteran in the house and a newbie. She may be a veteran, but she's new to the pol political world. I'm excited to have this young man on. I, I ran into him at the Keystone diner uh a couple weeks ago and he was chopping it up 
And 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 I love it when I, I can kick it with my my old school fellas because it's like hanging out with my pops. Me and my dad was always like a hey, number one. Oh dog, oh you you know you you young enough to be my pop. Quit playing, quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all give it up. <laughs> Representing Indianapolis City County Council, um, hanging out, running for reelection. Former fireman. He got all kind of stuff going on. Y'all give it up for Councilman Monroe Gray. Monroe. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me, Dana. I love it. And we got a newbie. She's running in my district. What? Dana, you, you got somebody running in the district and you ain't running? No, I didn't want to run. But we have we have another D running, Danita Hoskins. She I, I, I have not even really had a conversation with her. So this is going to be fun, fun, fun. Danita Hoskins running for my district, City County Council District 8. Miss Danita, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dana. I am so elated to be here. You are magnificent. And I am excited about List, uh, listening to the concerns of the listenership and viewership on your show and sharing with them about Danita Hoskin and how together we're going to help make this uh, District 8 even better. I love it. Now, that's Thank what you. I'm trying to talk about. You know, come on with that. Come on with that fire. Okay. Yes. I'm going to say age before beauty this go around. Usually I let the ladies go first, but I know Monroe has an amazing story to tell. Monroe, tell the people who you are and where you come from. Yeah, I'm Monroe Gray. I'm the current city county council for district number eight. Uh, I am a IPS uh, graduate. I went to school, William A. Bell School number 60. I short, graduated from Short Ridge High School, did college in California. Uh, I've been on the, I was a member of the Indianapolis Fire Department for over 35 years. And I've been on the city county council for almost 30 years. And I served uh, six years in the uh, uh, Airborne, uh, 82nd Airborne Division of the United States Army. Wow. So I've, been, I've been around for a while. You've been around for a while. 30 years. That's a long time. You've seen a lot of change in Indianapolis, haven't you? Yes, sir. Starting with the Circle City Mall, coming all the way up to today's where we are today. And what is the greatest joy that you get out of serving on council? Because you keep showing up every four years. What what brings you back? Well, my motto is I enjoy getting help for the people that I can help and getting help for people that I can't help. I love it. I love it. All right, Miss Danita, tell the people who you are and where you come from. Oh, thank you, Dana. Well, I'm Danita Hoskin, and I yell from right here in our own fair city, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a na native Hoosier. I'm also a mother of one and two bonus daughters, and so I'm happy to say I have four amazing grandchildren. Uh, I grew up on the east side of town, uh, went to school at 83, so I was right there at uh, 42nd and Emerson. Absolutely loved it. Went from uh, IPS 83, so that means I'm a, a product of IPS, and I just wear that proudly. And uh, I graduated from Arlington High School, where at graduation, I was president of the entire student government, as well as class representative for my senior class, among some other things. But uh, I have a degree in business administration that I earned from Vincennes University, as well as a degree in business management and communications that I earned from Concordia University. And I'm a professional learner, so I did go back to school and I earned six lifetime credentials in, it's called CNC, Computer Numerical Control, uh, operation and so that's in manufacturing so I have six lifetime credentials in mills and lays but um, I Whoa. absolutely love what I'm doing with our city and I'm president of the student council uh, I'm sorry I'm president of the Crown Hill Neighborhood Association Whoa. currently I that's a lot <laughs> so, yes ma'am so currently I am also um, serving as community builder for Midtown Indy 
which covers 20 neighborhoods in our Mid-North area. And just real briefly, I'll tell you that I have a significant number of years in finance, post-secondary education, where I worked at Martin University under uh, founding president uh, and um, the uh, second president. And I also have um, uh, property management experience as well as community economic development. So I share that to say that I'm a well-rounded person and I love working in my community because I love where I live. I told you I'm a native Hoosier and I'm glad to be here and not part of the brain drain that when I had the opportunity to leave at graduation, I did, I did not. I stayed here so I can help make a difference in our communities. I feel that because I'm I'm Indiana's own for real. You know, you and I have like very similar. It sounds about the same. I, I was a non-traditional right. student, but I mean, I, my philosophy always was if all the smart people leave, who's going to stay and help those that can't help themselves? Exactly, exactly. Because I do believe in learning and taking that learned information and sharing it with others so that they are empowered. Absolutely. So I absolutely agree with uh, uh, Counselor Gray. And hello, Counselor Grace. So it's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, Danita. I know you have your boundary, but uh, just like um, uh, it should be, the boundaries are just there just so that you can have some metrics, but uh, you have have to be able to work outside of the boundary so that uh, you know, and, and I thank you for all that you've done for Crown Hill, what happens in one community affects all other communities. That's what's thank up. You. That's what's up. And that's what it's all about. And if you and if you both come through this primary and and both of you, whoever comes to the primary, more than likely will with the general, because these are a really uh, heavy D districts. You guys are going to have the opportunity to work together. And already y'all showing some some love and respect for each other, which I find uh, is, is amazing because I've listened to that, the people in the state house and there's some senators and house reps over there that are just nasty for no reason at all. All right, y'all. Mm. Indianapolis. You, this this city is the economic engine for the economic hub for our entire state. We at, at times because other counties have people leaving and they're not bringing in the tax revenue that's necessary. And so they are considered welfare counties because they are getting subsidized by the tax dollars of uh, indie folk. We, are, we see a lot of pieces of legislation coming out of the state house that want to take over city, what we do here in Marion County. For example, Monroe, we talked about how we don't have those at-large seats anymore, how we don't have, um, uh, we don't get to vote for our judges anymore. Talk about as folks who want, to, as a, someone who has represented us on the council and someone who is looking to represent us on the council, how y'all feel about the state trying to take over different aspects of Marion Marion County that they don't do in other counties. And Monroe, you can go first. Well, you know, that's that's one of the problems that the City County Council has been having, and especially here in the last uh, few years, because if you look, we just introduced something the other night about no turning on red. Yeah. Uh, no turn on the red light. And the first next day, the state came up with something that will override that so that we can't do that. But we're going to go ahead on and pass it and wait and see what the uh, state we're going to do. And maybe we have to uh, uh, take it back. But right now we are moving forward with it. Um, you know, we've all, we've been trying for years to get a commuter tax where those people who don't live in Marion County but work here need to do something to help. They talk about how bad our roads are and all our chuck holes and stuff. But maybe if they would help pay some of the the cost of that, since they are working here, that uh, we have more money and we could do a better job on keeping the roads clean. A, a lot of states have a, a computer tax where that if you don't live in the county and you come and work in here, you have to pay uh, pay a, a little cost to yeah. uh, offset that. So, but with the present. Uh, uh, state House, the in, it was represented now with the supermajority Republican. That bill keeps uh, keep failing. It will never pass as long as until we get a better uh, makeup in the state house. That, with that, the supermajority over at the state house, it makes it almost impossible 
for the city to do anything that uh, has to have state approval because they are never going to uh, support a democratic county where we got a democratic mayor and a democratic control council. And that's really kind of messed up in the fact that, again, I saw when I saw the, the discussion and the amendment about, you know, uh, consolidated cities can't put up no turn on red signs. They always talk about, you know, local control, but they always seem to want to take local control away from Marion County. Danita, I'm sorry, Danita, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. No, no, I agree with you. So I appreciate that. I, and. For example, when you're talking about the uh, no turn on red, um, the um, pedestrians, you know, we did a study and learned that in a 10 year period, 120 pedestrians uh, were hit by uh, the reckless driving or the ability of people to be uh, to just turn uh, willy nilly or on red. And so I. I'm in def I'm definitely in agreement that the state made a the state did not need to to rescind this order and that the community is in should be in control of this. So um as a neophyte to the community uh of the city county council and as you call me a newbie. I would be right there working with my fellow counselors and veteran counselors, most definitely to help uh, rescind that order, uh, not just that one, but the commuter tax. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's it's actually rather frustrating to listen to these folks say the people that we elected in Indianapolis, we elected them. Right. We, the citizens, this almost a million person city, right, with over 600,000 registered voters, more than any other county. This is these are the folks that we elected to write policies and ordinance for us. Mm -hmm. And they are literally taking away our voice okay. at the city level, at the city county level. Um, and it's so frustrating. Indeed. There's some other. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Dana, it's, it's almost like the state senator and the state representative are wearing two hats. Mm. Not only are they controlling our future over at the state house, but also they got a hammer down on what we do here at mm. the city level. Absolutely. I, what, the one that got me was when they wanted to take over IMPD uh, last year. Remember, they put they they oh, in, yeah. they introduced legislation to have a five panel, a board panel uh, mm -hmm. the, that the governor picks to take over our IMPD. When has the state managed local law enforcement? It's the, the insanity. But I, I got to ask. But now I, you got to remember that was only for Marion County. Only for Marion County. I, I got to ask, though, y'all. How does it make y'all feel as a city that has over almost 30 percent African American, and we're creeping up over ten percent on Latin, uh, uh, Latin American uh, Latinos. The city has a lot of minorities. Are, uh, does it frustrate you that someone in in Crawfordsville or in Montgomery County thinks that they know better than what we do here in Marion County, especially as Black people? Well, then the the real thing is. We have people who live outside our district who are making decisions for us where we live and who has no ties or no connection whatsoever. So whatever they do in Marion County doesn't affect them. So they right. leave the state house and go home and go to sleep and wake up the next day and life is the same, not knowing whatever the crisis they might have created for the people of Marion County. Yeah, that's exactly. And using, uh, in the, using our city as a pass through. So, uh, and so you're absolutely correct, Monroe, that that's why our, we elect from the city for our council. So uh, it, it, would, it would be interesting to see and if, uh, if that was a, able to be turned around, it wouldn't happen. So it, Dana, it does, it, it's infuriating and it's frustrating to to know that such uh, that yeah. such policies continue, mm -hmm. and that came from that came from Unigov. Yeah, yeah. But we we'll never be able to correct that until we can get in control of the redistricting. Yeah. What, what, what we'll have now is with the redistricting going on the way it is, that um, 
it will be almost impossible for us to elect people who we think that might be able to represent us. Yeah. And that's what we got to do. We've got to, you, you know, we, that's why I, I work in all 92 counties. I try to recruit people who are like-minded so that we can send mm -hmm. to that state house to get their hands out of Marion County. Go on, beat it. <laughs> we don't want it. We don't want it. All right, guys, I got to, I got to hit on something that's going to probably pull at your heartstrings. You know, when I have um, this level of intelligence with me on the show, I want to make sure that I um, handle very sensitive um, discussions with, with um, grace who we saw what happened in Kansas, Kansas City, um, with the with Mr. Yuri. Um, we saw uh, where the, the cheerleader was shot and killed for getting in the wrong car. Um, we saw the young man was killed for ringing the wrong doorbell. We saw other little white teenagers that were shot at and one killed for pulling into the driveway. We have a, we have the crime rate in Indiana, in Indianapolis is up. Um, you know, violent crime is up. Um, homicides are up. Uh, I I personally don't believe that the mayor or the prosecutor can stop all crime. However, I think it takes a village to try to address the real root of crime. When you think about the bodies that we are seeing piling up to gun violence, how could you uh, at the city county level address the amount of guns that are falling into the wrong hands? And Mr. Need, I'm going to start with you on that one. Okay, thank you. Um, and you're right, it does tug at the heartstrings because uh, one thing when guns did not have to be, um, you didn't have to register, get a license to carry a gun and then um, taking those guns and modifying them so that they're just assault weapons, that in itself is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I had a, uh, if I may share a quick personal sure. uh, situation, I had a, uh, I have a relative, a very close relative, very young, 24 years of age with th uh, four children, five, three, two, and one years of age. And she lost her life due to uh, gun violence and domestic violence mm -hmm. uh, just recently. And mm -hmm. so not only did he kill her in front of their four children, he killed himself in front of their four children. Wow. And so we're dealing with trauma that is we need as a community to come together. You said it right. It takes this village. We cannot just rely on uh, our uh, our mayor and our prosecutor. We have to help them. We have to come up with some viable and real solutions and not just think that uh, it's going to go away if we bury our head in the sand. But uh, public safety is is paramount in our area, and so it's going to take it's going to take more than just uh, sitting around wishing that it'll go that it will go away, but actually bringing in the people who are affected by it as well. Monroe. Well, you know, here here again, this is another one of those issues over at the state house that this uh, city county council tried to have some input in, and it got totally uh, shut down. But the, my theory with the the crime is that before we're going to be able to address the crime, we need to address some of the other uh, underlying uh, issues that that uh, affect crime. We got to talk about poverty. We mm -hmm. got to talk about housing. We got to talk about job. We got to talk about mental health thing. All of these issues lead to the uh, the crime issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, until we can come up with some kind of way where that if a person has a good job and a person has a nice place to eat and sleep, then his chances for creating crime goes way down. But when you are out there and you homeless, you you sleep, you don't know where you're going to sleep at tonight. You don't know if you're going to have money for food tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All these things create an atmosphere that creates crime. Mm -hmm. And until we can get control of some of these issues, then the crime thing is not going to go down. I don't think we'll ever be able to get uh, uh, murders and like, down to zero. Right. But I think we could at least get them down to a single digit.
I, I, I agree. I, I, well, I, I'm going to say double digits because, you know, I, they you know, they always want to talk about how cities that have a lot of minorities in them, the, the, the crime rate is high. But it's cities that have a lot of minorities have a lot of people, period. And we're still the minority in most of those cities. Right. We're only 30 percent. That's a whole that's 70 percent of something else. Right. Um, and and I, I another thing Dana, that's misleading about this crime stuff is, you know what the number one crime uh, killer is? Overdose. Mm. Oh, yeah. Why we don't hear uh, a lot about overdose? Because most of those overdose people are, are non-black. Mm. Mm. What you know? You know? Well, so, you know, it, black crime sells newspapers and sells breaking news spots. So anytime that we do something, immediately it's going to become breaking news or it's going to come some kind of hot news item. So, but at the same time, we're losing uh, non, non-African non American people uh, with the drug thing, and you very seldom hear anything about it. That's it. That's it. I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that we can kind of get the, the, the crime thing under control. But I would like to see, like you said, more community services, more opportunities for people to, to better themselves, some some retraining, upskills, things like that. D- Danita, you and I are both lo- lifelong learners, you know. And so when you when you can give people something else to learn, it, it changes their focus. Indiana's on Dana Black Turn Left. We are talking to Councilman Monroe Gray, who is running for re-election, and Miss Danita Hoskins, who is running for City County Council in my district, District 8, I'm claiming it. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's switch focus here a little bit, and let's talk about your campaigns. You know, Pike Town, you're up in Pike Township, right, Monroe? Well, my new district will be, uh, I help, uh, my current district is uh, part of Washington and part of Pike. But in my new district, the the one that I'm seeking now, District 2, it is a uh, all Washington Township. Okay, so it moved. Okay, so th- wow, so you're meeting some new constituents and new uh, new people. So that's that's that might be a good thing. What has it been like w- when you're out talking to your folk um, and in the community? What are the things that they're telling you that they want to see you address when you are elected? The you know regards to what district that you represent, the people's uh, are all talking about the same issues. And, you know, that's public safety, potholes, uh, housing, food deserts, and uh, all those issues. So, you know, you kind of have to uh, reach back and uh, think about the things that you have done, think about that what you would like to get done, and some of the things that you you would really push hard for, but chances are they're not going to get done. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, Is it because of bureaucracy or why, why won't they get done? Because, first of all, uh, there's a lot of the issues that we have with potholes and streets. There's just not enough money to get all those done. Okay, I did. I did hear uh, Robin Shackelford talk. Representative Robin Shackelford talk about how they've finally addressed the inequity in the 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 infrastructure formula this past week. Um, we yeah, been- we we we've been trying to talk about that for a long time. Uh, a couple of years ago, you know, when we. We expanded, the, well, not a couple years ago, several years ago when we expanded. They used to be go by the old uh, five districts. Mm-hmm. So when we took in the new fire stations and the new uh, townships and stuff, we never expanded mm-hmm. out to those all the time. So the last, uh, a couple of years ago, we finally got that money, and now we're expanding out to that. But the way that the formula that they use for the road dollars now is totally inadequate to help the Indianapolis because a person in with a two lane highway gets the same amount of money we get for a four lane highway. So it uh, it's just grossly so unfair, and we're trying to get the we are we are supporting the uh, state representatives to try to get that change. And I think we made a little um, headway this past time. But we need to go much farther. I love it, Miss Danita. What are your constituents talking to you about? Um, very similar concerns: um, housing, street affordable housing. Mm. Uh, we have so many families uh, who are just—they're homeless. It's first time in 
in my lifetime that yeah. I've seen so many families living in their cars or uh, couch surfing. And, and we're not talking about individuals, we're talking about families because the rental rates are just astronomical and it seems like the sky is the limit. You have uh, outside investors coming in and uh, flipping houses, uh, knocking on doors, sending um, cards and f uh, making phone calls to people and offering them money, more money than they've ever seen at one time in their lifetime. And when they take that money, then they find that they cannot go out and find something comparable nope. to what they already had. And so it's important that we work with our community development corporations who receive the community uh, development block grants and other uh, grant uh, to help in home repairs for those who want to age in place or stay in their homes. And so um, and housing, affordable housing is definitely a big issue. Uh, not only housing, uh, as Monroe indicated, public safety is uh, always a big issue. And we just talked about that momentarily. But uh, I also want to share that one of the biggest concerns in many of the areas, most definitely in District 8, is equitable access to food. Mm. Yes, you can get food. Uh, you can get something to put in your stomach at the at the gas station or a discount store, but families shouldn't be having shouldn't be fed from discount stores and gas stations. Mm -hmm. They should be able to have uh, fresh produce and meats. And so, one of the uh, things that I've done recently in the last uh, couple of years or so is to work with the farmers markets, and the farmers market. Uh, especially with local farmers, are able to bring in the fresh produce, um, meats in some instances, the dairy products. And so uh, I've uh, been working with a couple of organizations around the city that one wouldn't think would be a, could be a partner for the farmer's market, and that's gleaners as well as second helpings, but more particularly gleaners because they uh, received a grant and that grant allowed them to buy the produce from local farmers. And we have a lot of local farmers. They mm -hmm. just needed that push, mm -hmm. but buy the produce from the local farmers so that they can give it to the uh, households that are in our areas that are in desperate need. And uh, those farmers are also able to be able to sell their overstock produce. And I, I share this with you because I was speaking with the gentleman uh, the other day, and he said, you know, I never thought about a farmer's market being a conduit to a, a serving a household's uh, in food insecurity needs. And the reason mm -hmm. why is because where he lives, there are house, there are grocery stores that he can walk into anytime he mm -hmm. so desire. And mm -hmm. uh, a farmer's market is just like a, it's an amenity. It's a, a a, a plus one, if you will. Yeah, but in, yeah. in our areas, a farmer's market is a make the difference for that that household when it comes to their food. Absolutely. And you know what? I think the other thing that people don't even want to talk about or think about is how not being able to have healthy choices impacts your health care, impacts your yes. body. And, you know, so health care costs continue to rise and go up. But what's bec for many of us who are already genetically prone to high blood pressure, diabetes, and some of the other things, we don't don't even have a space to really get quality choices so you know, like I, it drives me crazy when people talk about you know self willpower or whatever the heck they be saying if you don't mm -hmm. have the opportunity to make good choices you're gonna have some uh, higher health concerns when you're just eating junk like you said going to uh, they're not hungry but it's not healthy those are empty empty calories you know another thing that uh, I, I find interesting here in Indianapolis you know we are start we have seen where uh the state house tries to limit our ability to maximize our dollars uh from a city county council perspective so we do everything that we're supposed to do as a municipality to bring in tourism to bring in uh conventions and things like that but we see where you know constantly uh those things are are they they work against us in the state house as you move forward, talk about some of the things that you want to do to, to bring more opportunities to Indianapolis. Talk about your TIFs and, and TIF areas and opportunity zones and how you want to expand those out 
uh, into Indianapolis and get him out of the Miles Square if we could. Either one is fine. I don't care. Well, the first thing that we have to do is we got if the city are giving out all these contracts and calling in all these development companies to do this development, one of the ways that we can reduce poverty and reduce crime in the city or in Marion County is to have a uh, uh, something with some teeth in it in the con in the contract saying that they must hire from Marion County or they must hire a uh, MBE WBE uh, portion in there and make sure that they have someone who's following up on that to make sure that they are getting these these contracts you know uh we we're bringing in at the the incident with the company out on the west side it recently came in we gave them all that money and it's supposed to create 300 jobs or 600 jobs but yet and still none of those jobs has came to light so one thing we got to do is 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 it be patrol and in in uh uh, uh, do a better job of following up on these contracts that we issue mm -hmm. and make sure that the promise that those people make for those contracts that they uh, uh, hold true on, on their portion of the contract. And you we know, don't, we don't already have like an oversight committee. Well, we got, uh, we have uh, uh, a minority and women business uh, thing up on, in the city county building that does that. But, I don't think they have anyone. I don't think they really do a good job of following up with uh, making sure that if I if I said Dana Black is is my minority company working with me, there's no one to go out on the job and see if Dana Black is actually working on the job. Gotcha, gotcha. So just because I say it, don't necessarily mean it's true. I I, right. I know, and and you're right because I have met husbands who own a business, but they put it in a wife's name. Right. And the wife is a stay-at-home mom. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But this, this is see, every time we create some kind of bill or some kind of law that helps to create more jobs and more input or more participation for the minorities, someone in the minority come along and find a way how to circumvent it. Yeah. And one of those rules were in the trucking industry. We was uh, banging on them pretty good about uh, not enough Afro-Americans with trucking companies was getting in this work. So what they do is they say that uh, the guy got 10 trucks or 20 trucks. He'd take 10 of those trucks and turn it over and put them in his wife's name. And then what he does is he'll, he'll win the contract and then he hires his wife's trucking company to be the minority portion of it. So he's still getting a hundred percent of the contract. Wow, it's it's a shame. You would think that there would be enough for everyone to to go around, uh, and there is enough for everybody to go around. You ain't got to be greedy like that. Danita, jump in there. Yeah, no, I, I'm just thinking about a construction site that uh, is occurring at 38th and Mer 38th in Illinois. It's a hundred percent XBE and BE, and that is absolutely unheard of. And that was done intentionally because the property owner is uh, black and their their concern is helping minorities, blacks, uh, black and browns to stay in, um, engaged in the process, learn the process, and then be able to uh, go ahead and train that process, uh, if you will. And so I know, and I am in agreement there with Councilor Monroe again, that if we monitor it, because we know that um, the Office of Minority Business Women and Minorities, it is um, shorthanded like everybody else. So we have to have our eyes on the projects, our feet on the, and our ears to the ground to make sure that that developer is doing what they're supposed to do and make sure that those are covenants that are added to their zoning so that they have to adhere to those. I like that. You know, and, and, and I think the neighborhood associations can help in, in doing that. I know that's what we have done over in the neighborhood in which I currently represent as president. 
Dana, the real problem is there's no penalty. Mm, there's too. no penalty. When you, None. when you, uh, if you tell, if I give you a contract and you tell me I got this, this is this, and then I find out that you don't, then there's no penalty. What I tried to do was get them to instill a penalty. One thing people understand is once you, they start putting a, a monetary penalty on you, where say for instance, if you got uh, ten uh, a, a million dollars that's supposed to be given to a, a minority contractor and uh, come to find out that the minority contractor didn't get it, then you need to give that money back. Yeah, I like and then that. You need to become I do too. ineligible for bidding on city contracts for a year or two. I, I love so that. Now you get their attention. Yeah, I love that. And and what kind of low life, uh, mm, what kind of greedy somebody you got to be? Like you all, you guys are already getting the vast majority of the business. It, I've been in those negotiations on contracts in the city county. I used to work in the surveyor's office and, and, and I, it, it was only 10%. It, it was yeah. only, it's only 10%. You mean to tell me you can't just chill out so we can have the 10% when 10%, we're 30% of the population. We're only right. asking, I mean, what kind of, what kind of, I mean, it's just irritating. You don't, t don't tell me you a good person, but you taking jobs when you already are getting 90% of the opportunities, you know, it is kind what's, of, what's happening in this city. Like, uh, not so much in other cities is that, uh, we talk a good thing about uh, diversity and equity and all that stuff. We put our names on a on a newspaper and print it out. So this, but then when you go to that same business and look to find out what are they doing in actuality about diversity and equity, you'll find out that they ain't, they haven't moved from where they were ten mm. years. No, no, and yeah. and, and even though like I so. I know that when you guys are elected, you represent the entire district and it's a it's a makeup of a kaleidoscope of humans. But I know as black folk, it's got to be incredibly frustrating when you see how the sausage is made and then you still seeing people sneak sausages out the back. You know what I'm saying? They, they taking the premium, the premium ingredients out the back and leaving you with the junk. Indiana's own Dana Black talking to uh, Councilmember Monroe Gray, who's running for re-election in District 2, and Ms. Danita Hoskins, who's running for election uh, in District 8. They both have primary opponents, so I'm glad I had a chance to get them on before the primary so you can hear from them. All right, let's talk about y'all's campaign. Uh, Monroe... <laughs> What are the, every campaign has three main issues that they are talking to their constituents about. What are your three main issues? Well, it's, it's probably all, uh, most all the candidates got almost the same issue. <laughs> public, public safety <laughs> being number one because of our high rate of murders. And then, you know, then housing. And we need to do something about this mental health. Mm. We, need to, we need to do something. We need to put more money into mental health. We need, ever since they closed down, uh, the state closed down. Uh, Central state? Central state. Central state. We have, mm -hmm. we have, we have been uh, way behind in our protection of the people that who have some mental issues. Mm -hmm. so, this is in housing. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, they keep, they keep talking about uh, fair housing and all, but affordable housing. But who can afford what they are calling affordable housing. Exactly. Right. Affordable housing is way out of reach for the common everyday working person. So is the rent. So we need to do something that should be a bill of rights for renters. That should be a, we should have some kind of way to protect them from the landlords as well as we protect the landlords from the renters. They, so they killed that bill in the state house this year. Yeah, they killed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it uh, when you start talking about just limiting yourself to three issues, you kind of short sighted yourself. Well, no, I mean, I mean, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that you're limiting yourself. Usually on a campaign, though, like you, because you, you only get like what thirty seconds for your elevator speech. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. You know, no, no. I, 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 I listen. I recognize. But I'm just. I'm yeah. not saying that you're short sighted. I'm just saying that a candidate has to have graphs of more than just three. You might have three that you want to work on right yeah, away. Yeah. But then there's so many others that you can work on that will support the three that you are uh, trying to make your your uh, special campaign issues on. Yeah. What about you, exactly. Mr. Nita? 
Exactly. Thank you. And so I uh, mentioned earlier about mine. Uh, three that I had to pick from the many, the public safety, affordable housing, and um, equitable access to food. So what I want to also just touch upon, since I did about that, mention that earlier, is that I'm com committed to learning. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to uh, working with our veterans uh, so that uh, I can listen and learn but also take my experience and my gift skills and talents in uh, so that I can find out what the what the residents of District 8 want, what their needs, desires are. And so I will be able to do that by making sure that I am accessible. Mm. I always make sure I give my phone number out so that they can reach me at any time. I do that any way and um, make sure that uh, I take, let them know that I can't, I may not be able to handle everything right then and there, but I will make, they can be rested assured that I will find out how we're going to make some resolution to whatever the concern is that they may have. This is just how I've always been. This is how um, I will continue to be and be better in that respect, but I can't do it alone. It's going to require me working with my fellow co uh, colleagues that will be in the council as well as our community at large. And so uh, that's, that's what I will be doing as I am uh, moving forward in the journey of being city county council for district eight. I also want to publicly just say thank you to Councillor Oliver for his many years of service in the City County Council. 20 years as uh, the Councillor for, uh, it's currently District 9, but when it's redistricted in 2024, uh, I, I want to make sure that I publicly say that. Dang, and to Monroe, all of our you, you missing your homeboy. You you dropping one off. He, he, he leaving you to the youngsters. Yeah, yeah Duke and I... But Duke and I grew up in the same neighborhood. Wow. We've, been, we've been knowing each other 70, 80 years. Woo! <laughs> Man. That's we wisdom. Played on the same, we played on the same playground. Dang. You know, yeah, I, 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 think, to, I think that's I dope. I hate to see Duke leave, but, you know, that was his decision. So, you yeah. know, it was good for the people. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think there's value in having um, the wisdom of our senior folks in, in elected office. Yes. But I also see the value of having some younger folks because you want to transfer that institutional knowledge because we ain't going to yeah. all live for, forever. So hopefully, you know, Monroe, as you are looking at well, however many more years, you got somebody under your wing that you raising up. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I know you can live forever, bro. But I mean, yes. <laughs> oh, no, I don't I don't intend to live forever. <laughs> I don't intend to, you know, uh, but I have some young people that I work with all the time that I think had they not changed my district so drastically, mm -hmm. I would have had a great candidate this time. The young guy that's running in Pike, uh, Maurice Scott. Yeah, Maurice, I've had him on the show. He, he was one of the guys that kind of mentor Excellent. And, and had him kind of coming along and probably would have taken my place if they hadn't so dropped me such a crazy district, <laughs> which means that it took uh, Maurice out of the district because he lives in Pike. Got it. Got it. And so but, I'm going to ask y'all this question. This is before we get to, to um, wrapping this up, because, you know, when you're having fun, time flies. An hour be going by quick. Yes. Um, well, as you guys have been campaigning, I mean, Monroe, you've been doing your thing for 30 years. Danita, you've been out here in the community. What brings you the greatest satisfaction in being a public servant? To see, see the result of your work when you're trying to help someone or you're trying to get a project done for that community. You're all anything that you can do to bring to the community to make it better. And, and you had hands on it. It's always a good feeling. You know, and I've worked on some very good projects over the years, and uh, I have uh, I, I met some great people over the years, and uh, you know, even sometimes uh, uh, 
I have represented maybe three or four different districts over the years. Mm -hmm. And still, I get calls from some of my old districts saying, hey, Monroe, how about this? Can you do this? Can you do that? And so it's just nice to know. It's a good feeling when you know that you have helped someone. I love it. Mr. Amen Nick. to that. And I, I say, um, I have to share this with you. I asked my grandmother a long time ago, when did I become the go-to person? Mm. And she said, baby, it's just your time. And she's right. Mm. Because that's what I've been doing ever since, ever since. I know that it is my time to continue uh, taking that information that's given to me and making it so that I am the public servant that this position so desires and so need. And it comes from passion. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to say that I have some gifts, skills, and talents that go Ooh, along with that. I'm still in that. <laughs> I'm still in that. I got passion, but I got some gifts. Gift, skills, and talent to go with it. I'm, I'm still in that. Gift, <laughs> skills, and, I and talent. Thank you, because it's about legacy building. It's about community wealth building. And I shared earlier, people who want to age in place in the neighborhoods that they've lived in all of their lives, we, they should be able to do so. And those who are uh, new to the neighborhood, we welcome them as well. But it's about making sure that we don't forget that a community is more than just one person and it's more than just a, a brick or uh, the street. It, it, it's, the, uh, it's the people and satisfying the people is, is what I do. That's who I am. I love I've always it. always been in that position. I love it. Can I? And so because I interview folks from all over the state, it's very, this is the first time that I've had two lifelong Indianapolis folk uh, and and me being in Indianapolis like I graduated from North Central okay. you know I'm a panther you know what I'm saying and uh, there's just something about being well, we, 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 we we reach out we feel you <laughs> <laughs> we do. Absolutely. Not, nothing like being a blue devil, though. Uh -oh. No, I had to say a, a, a golden knight. A uh -oh. golden knight now. There y'all go. Yeah. Everybody want to be a panther. Quit playing. Quit playing. <laughs> Everybody want to come up on 86th Street. Come on. And look, no. look, look. No. No, you know they want to come in the inner city. That's why I share knocking the doors every day trying to get in there. And if they're doing that, that means it's something good there. I keep telling people. Let me tell y'all something. Stay I, there. Let's, I, let us work on this together. I, so all of my family is like over in um, on Clifton and they on th 34th in Delaware, yeah. you know, uh, and then I got kinfolk out in Hallville. So all my people was always south of 38th Street. Mm -hmm. They used to say, y'all way up there in the suburbs, and we was just on Fox Hill. We, were, we was just, we wasn't in the burbs. We was just up the, up Michigan Road. I mean, I tell you, it's, I, I, I love being an Indianapolis native. I love what it means. I love our city. I believe our city is, one of, is the best city in the state, obviously, and it's one of the best in the Midwest. And I don't think people, I think people sleep on us, but we've hosted the Super Bowl. We, we are, we've hosted multiple Final Fours. We got legislative conferences coming we got we we are dope we only second in my opinion to chicago right we only second to chicago <laughs> columbus ohio you not there yet i love it i love talking to my natives and what's the what's the blue devils short ridge high school short ridge oh, high school oh i remember that yeah okay they went to yeah. a junior high school and then when i was in high school and then they went back to a high school that's the, what the, they were now they're the bulldogs right uh -huh. butler but oh no oh okay oh okay i didn't know that i didn't know that yeah. that's what's up all right uh danita tell the people where they can find you oh you can find me at danita for indy that's danita the number four indy you can find me on facebook instagram hit me up on my gmail danita for indy at gmail.com and you can also always call my personal phone. I will answer. And if I don't answer, leave me a message and I'll call you back. 317-934-8660. Danita for Indy. 
Whoa. City County Council District 8. Thank you. So you better than me. I have like an alias number. I have a, I have a number that I give out to the public and then I have one for the family. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and do you have any events coming up? Are you knocking any doors? What's going down? Yes, I'm looking for volunteers to help me continue knocking on the doors uh, to let people know that I'm running. You know, Dana, there are a lot of people who don't know that we have an election on May 2nd. Yeah. And it is important that I help in making sure that people know that there's an election May 2nd. Not in, not just that, but let them know that I'm running and I need and I want their vote. Not only that, I'm going to earn their vote because I fight for my people. I love and I it. fight for all my people. So I do have an event coming up. I have a dinner coming up on um, Sunday, Sunday dinner, April the 30th. It's going to be at the wonderful Jewel Event Center at 3333 North Illinois. And that information is on my uh, my platform, my media sources that I've mentioned here. But I am looking for volunteers. And if you want to support me in other ways, that information is on there as well. So, Dana, thank you for allowing me again to be no, here. No, thank you for you coming on. Sh- and sharing. Thank you for coming on short notice. I, I didn't even, you know, I, I booked folks out months in advance. I didn't know Quincy Murphy had dropped out of the race. Uh, uh, you, you know, Don Lewis was the one that sent me an, a message, and I was like. Oh, Isn't I, she fabulous? I, and I had to like confirm it. I couldn't respond until I confirmed like, yo, is dude not in? And so I finally got back with the fabulous Samantha Douglas. And she's like, I thought you knew. I was like, nope. So thank you for filling in. Uh, and Monroe, we, we had you for last week and you were like, I'm going a, I'm to a come next week. Tell the people, <laughs> tell the people where, where they can find you. They can find me at uh, Monroe MonroeGray.com. On the, uh, you can get me on Facebook as uh, Monroe Gray Jr. at uh, elect Monroe Gray Jr. at SBC dot I love it. I love it. And do you have any events coming up? Any volunteer opportunities, fundraisers? Well, we always uh, we don't have any scheduled uh, fundraising events uh, right away, but we do need uh, volunteers. If anybody would like to work. Uh, uh, Early voting starts Saturday. It'll be Saturday, this Saturday through next Sunday. And we'll need people to help work on the uh, early voting. And then there's always a need for people to work on uh, election day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Mr. Nita, I have your flyer. Uh, you sent it over to me, so I included it in my little rotating uh, advertising so people will be able to see that. Um, and if they can uh, join in, that would be fantastic. I appreciate both of you all. And I got to tell you what, Mamro Gray, uh, you wasn't wrong. I was missing out on a lot by not having you on my show. I've been doing this show for <laughs> since 2017. Bruh, you are dope. I, I, can sit and, I, I can sit and talk to you for a while. And you know, don't be. I hope you wasn't offended by me calling you my pops, but like, I, nah. I'm, 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 I was daddy's girl. Like, I don't know nah. if y'all could tell by the way I dress, the walk, act, whatever. But me and my pops, like my my pops, they used to say I was his shadow. Wherever my pops went, that's where I was. And 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 so when I saw all y'all at the diner, I was like, <laughs> man, it was like, and and me and Miss and, and uh, Representative Bartlett, we be chopping it up on a regular. So it was so so it was my mistake not having you on the show till now uh and i definitely definitely am going to have both of y'all back because y'all are both intriguing uh and i appreciate the the civil service work that you guys are trying to do and encouraging people to be civically engaged and that's the most important part all right indiana's all dana black turn left talking to monroe gray who's running for re-election in city county council uh, district two and miss danita hoskins who's running for city count city county council district eight all right guys we see all of the hate bills that are coming through the state house we see the hate bills they come they show up all the time this i need you guys to go to our indiana stonewall website i will include the links and i need y'all to purchase a ticket to go to our fundraiser, it's Party Pride, June 17th. Here's the, we, all the funds that we raise, it's Indiana Stonewall Democrats, go toward Democratic LGBTQ plus candidates and 
our allies. The endorsement process will be opening up soon. If you become an endorsed candidate from Indiana Stonewall, we take those funds and we donate them to the candidates. Right now, we are seeing an unprecedented attack of policies that are looking to limit the ability for regular gay folk, trans folk, whatever tax paying people to not be full citizens in our state. So please consider coming to our fundraiser, buying some tickets, becoming a sponsor. I'm going to include the link and you will get to hear from the former mayor of the fourth, our nation's fourth largest city, the first LGBTQ plus gov mayor of the city. She is now, and that was Houston. She was the mayor of Houston. Yes. She is now president and CEO of Victory Institute and Victory Fund. She is committed to making sure what she says is the best way for us in the LGBTQ plus community to take care of ourselves is to run for office. Simple as that. Because if we can't, we, we don't know who are all who all our allies are until they show up. So the best way for us to take care of ourselves is to put our names on the ballot. So please, please, please consider buying a ticket, becoming a sponsor um, to our event. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really do appreciate the time. As always, I love talking to these candidates. We got one more week of, of candidates coming on before the primary, and then it's on and popping, baby. It's on and popping. Election, May 2nd. If you haven't already early voted, you still can early vote. And don't forget to cast your ballot. Please, please show up to the polls. This is the most amazing thing that we can do for self-governing. And I'll tell you, don't, if you say your vote don't matter, then why do they work so hard to take it from you? All right. Indiana's own Dana Black. I will holla at y'all next week. Peace. <laughs> Turn Left is the property of Black Girl IT Solutions. Executive producer, Indiana's own Dana Black. Music by www.binsound.com.